Farming is as versatile as a Swiss pocket knife. Whether you need materials for crates, cooking, alchemy stones, T9 mats or fruits, farming got you. It can also be an insanely low effort life skill. A big milestone here is reaching Artisan, where you unlock magical seeds. They are like regular seeds but take up much less space, making farming so much more convenient. In this guide I'm gonna show you how to level farming to Artisan in one afternoon. I tried my best to make this guide beginner friendly, even leveling a fresh alt to Artisan to take away any potential struggles you might encounter on your journey. Here's what you'll need. First you'll want an alt character with full energy. The character will become your dedicated farming alt that you can swap to every time you need to deal with the farms. Ideally you want a character that has run the main quest for the extra inventory slots. Bonus points if the character is cute. Then you want to stack XP buffs. Here's a list of common buffs with the ones I recommend anyone to run colored in green. Feel free to use the blue colored buffs based on what you have access to. Though I wouldn't go overboard on buffs since you'll only be needing somewhere between 30 minutes to 1 hour of buff uptime to reach Artisan. The only buffs I don't recommend are Mastery Scrolls because Farming Mastery has not been implemented yet and the Cake buff for the duration. As a baseline you can grab Farmer's Clothes at plus 1 or plus 2 off the market as well as Seafood Crown and Verdure. And for accessories just yoink whatever you have on your main life skiller. If you don't have any accessories this would be a great time to buy at least Trilogia off the market. Mastery accessories not only give life skill mastery which has no meaning for farming but also a bit of life exp. Lightstones are a somewhat new addition to the game where you can create set effects with up to 4 stones by slotting them into artifacts. The cultivation set is cheap exp using 4 harvest stones. You can upgrade to the magical soil set by slotting an iridescent over one of the harvest stones. Remember that you can always extract the iridescent at a blacksmith after you're done leveling. For artifacts you would ideally run live exp but realistically just use whatever you have access to. If you don't have any artifacts talk to your black spirit and he'll give you some. Then you're gonna rent 10 strong fences from Flaviano and Heido. Each fence costs 10 contribution points and you can use a maximum of 10 at a time, so you'll be investing 100 CP into farming. I know 100 CP is a lot, but farming is not a thing you wanna half ass. If you need more CP, do a vinegar cookout or rip up some burger nodes. If none of that is an option, go for as many fences as you can right now and expand as you get more CP. You can also get one free strong fence from a quest, though the quest requires having farms set up, so maybe it's something to do later down the road. I'll link the quest line below. And then you want to get a few byproduct fertilizer and 100 special purple mushroom hyphae. For a clarification, hypha is what you would know as a seed, but for mushrooms. With the setup done, you want to make your way to Logia Farm. Logia Farm has a nice view and is a great spot to level, I'll explain why in just a second. To place a fence, click on it in your inventory, which will open up the place menu. See this grid on the floor? You can place the fence if the middle pin is blue. Placing all 10 fences can be a bit tricky, so if you're struggling, here's a setup that you can copy. The leveling routine roughly falls into three steps. Step 1. Plant the seeds. You can do that by interacting with the fence, which activates the crop place mode. The shortcut for planting seeds is number key 1 into left click into spacebar. I would place the crops towards the edge of the fence so you don't accidentally interact with the fence while dealing with the crops. Alright, repeat this with all fences. You might have to go back to fetch a few more seeds from the central market in Valia. Once you have planted all seeds, you can apply fertilizer which reduces the growth time by 20%. It applies to the whole fence and has a bit of a splash to it so you can hit multiple fences at once. One more thing, if you want to level farming, don't put any workers on your farms. They will automatically tend to your crops, but right now we want to do that ourselves to get all the sweet EXP. Once the crops are planted, we wait. Specifically, we wait until the crops get blighted. That happens at 5 minute intervals at a low chance. While we're waiting for the blight ticks, let's take a look at the crop menu. Temperature and humidity are the two big ones. Temperature affects the growth time of the crop. If the temperature at our current location is in the thick wet part, we get the lowest growth time for that crop. Though growth time is not terribly important right now, what matters for leveling is the humidity. Humidity affects how often a crop gets blighted. 
For purple mushrooms, the humidity is currently outside of the ideal range, which means we'll get frequent blights. That's just what we want, because removing blight, also called pruning, gives tons of XP. We can also see the fertilizer we applied earlier. Optionally, we could install scarecrows and an irrigation system to help with health and moisture, but none of that is needed in this location. In short, when farming for EXP, getting bad humidity is the primary goal and temperature is secondary. In contrast, when farming magical seeds for products, you want optimal temperature and humidity is secondary. While waiting for the crops to get blighted, you can swap to a different character to pass the time. You can check the status of your crops through the farming menu at any time. A good time to swap back is when about half of your crops have blighted, which usually takes 20 to 30 minutes. Before you start pruning, make sure you have all EXP buffs activated. Pruning drops a few different items which give different amounts of EXP. Hearts, sharps and mysterious seeds are the jackpot of course. Mysterious seeds often get confused with magical seeds, but they're quite different. Basically, mysterious seeds are a one-time loot bag of items, while magical seeds can be farmed sustainably. Getting in more prunes obviously means more chances to get those jackpot items and therefore more EXP. And here's a tip to get more prunes in. Remember that blight ticks happen in 5 minute intervals. The tick timers are independent between channels. So if you're pruning and see this message, which means a blight tick happened, swap to another channel and continue pruning. While on the old channel you would need another 5 minutes for the next tick, this channel could be much closer to its next tick. If you have access to guild home channels which have zero server swap cooldown, you might even get in multiple swaps per pruning session. This trick is the basis for a more advanced leveling method, which you'll want to consider when going for master and beyond. You can find all about it in Del's Crazy Man's power leveling plan. Alright, prune your plants until the farm is squeaky clean, wait again and repeat that until the crops reach 100%. As soon as that happens, you should breed them. That's because crops above 100% can't get blighted. Breeding yields 1 to 3 seeds, byproducts and fruits for alchemy. You'll get lots of excess seeds which you can sell on the market. From here, you can replant your crops and start over at step 1. Repeat that until you reach artisan. Once you reach Artisan, you have two ways forward. Either start farming with magical seeds for whatever you need out of your Swiss pocket knife or continue leveling. If you're going for the first route, you'll need to get magical seeds. They're not handed to you at Artisan, but obtained from breeding crops. For example, to get magical strawberry seeds, you need to breed special strawberries. They have a 1% chance to drop from breeds. So you would start with only special crops and then replace your whole farm with magical seeds over a few cycles. If you're not sure what to farm, maybe you'll find something on my magical farming sheet. Alternatively, you could continue leveling with special purple mushrooms. For leveling, special seeds are still the way, even if you have access to magicals, because you want as many plants as possible to prune. The next and last milestone for farming is Master 1, which takes another 50 to 100 pruning sessions and unlocks old moon fences. They are smaller versions of strong fences and open up farming spots in much more confined spaces. But to be honest, Logia Farm at Velia is perfectly fine for 90% of crops and here you can comfortably place 10 strong fences. Leveling beyond master is not that worthwhile because there is no mastery and all higher farming level does is reduce the time it takes to interact with crops. That's it for this video. In the next video I'll tell you all about farming for products with magical seeds and how much money you can expect doing that. Take care.